NASA furthers their plans for the Starship human landing system, inflation has come for Starlink users, Crew Dragon missions are lined up for liftoff, and we finish with today's honorable mention. I'm Kevin and this is SpaceX in the News. On Wednesday, NASA announced a new approach to their manned Artemis moon missions. Not only will SpaceX land their unmanned lunar starship on the natural satellite surface for a demo mission, but the agency is, quote, now asking NASA to transform the company's proposed human landing system into a spacecraft that meets the agency's requirements for recurring services for a second demonstration mission. Artemis 3 will see humans land on the moon aboard a lunar starship. The vehicle is expected to act as a moon ferry docking with the Orion spacecraft and shuttling astronauts back and forth to the lunar surface. Administrator Bill Nelson said the development of the vehicle is making good progress. But NASA is also once again asking American companies to propose lander concepts capable of ferrying astronauts between the moon's surface and its future space station, called Gateway. Known as the Sustaining Lunar Development Contract, this effort is meant to maximize NASA's support for competition and provide redundancy and services to help ensure NASA's ability to transport astronauts to the moon. But what they won't tell you is that this is more likely a thing again because the HLS losers just cried that hard about it. After all, that is how we reward behavior in this country now. Blue Origin is expected to bid once again, and I'm calling it. They'll win, lest they'll take NASA to court. Again. The draft solicitation will be issued in the coming weeks. The agency will then host a virtual industry day, and after a period held for review, they'll release a formal request for proposals this summer. Over the past couple of weeks, inflation has been a topic of discussion because it's gotten well beyond the point of affecting SpaceX's operations. Elon said a couple weeks ago that his companies are seeing significant recent inflation pressure in raw materials and logistics. Then during our last episode on Tuesday, we spoke about SpaceX raising their rideshare prices this month for their small sat customers. In fact, SpaceX has updated their website to adjust for inflation concerning all of their Falcon 9 and heavy prices, which were $62 million and $90 million respectively prior to the change. But like ESG, inflation doesn't just come for businesses. It's here for your wallet too, and mine. But I'm sure if you pay the bills in your household, you noticed that already. After my last video dropped, like many of you, I received an email from SpaceX regarding the change in price for my Starlink order. What was $4.99 for the dish when I submitted my order is now $5.49. It'll be $5.99 for all new orders. And the monthly service price also rose $11. And I assume that goes for all pre-existing customers as well. SpaceX's vice president, Tom, Told Michael Sheets of CNBC, these price changes are, quote, purely an inflation-driven decision. It's a tough challenge keeping ahead just so we don't start bleeding. If you're looking for someone to blame, you can cast your gaze upon those in D.C., the Treasury, and the Federal Reserve who still think modern monetary theory is a sound economic strategy. And maybe ourselves as well. Our so-called leaders print billions out of thin air to give to other countries while our businesses are forced to shutter, devaluing the money in our bank accounts. They send aid to foreign countries so they can secure their borders, while ours remain open to bloodthirsty cartels. They shut down our energy independence and all the jobs that come with it, and instead pay foreign powers for their oil with our tax dollars. Why do we elect those who hate us? Is it really because we're that stupid and vote with our feelings instead of our intellect? Or is the whole thing just rigged against we the people? By the way, for those of you who are confused abroad, the reason why your prices are going up too is because the US dollar is the world reserve currency. So for example, the dollar is the money that nations of the world use to buy their oil, with few but growing exceptions thanks to the globalist Build Back Better policies of our current resident in office. Oil is what your country and mine and our economies run on. Like it or not, that's how it is at the moment. So that's why you as a foreign citizen should still be concerned about the things we discuss here. That and obviously you like SpaceX, and if you didn't know, they're an American company. That is also affected by American political and economic policies like inflation. In fact, this sounds like a great opportunity to remind my American and Canadian viewers about our sponsor, My Patriot Supply. To add to what Tom said, thinking ahead to keep ahead of rising prices is both smart and necessary for survival. I told you last summer that once our supply chain shuts down, it's not exactly something you can just reboot right back up. Just too many moving parts. Our docks are still a mess to this day. So between that and the rise of inflation that was already happening back then, I took up My Patriot Supply as a sponsor because it's a product I believe in. An emergency food supply is an investment that I believe is smart to have because our infrastructure is man-made and humans are fallible, as we have all now bared witness to. Now, I went to the grocery store yesterday, and of course there were some empty shelves because you know that's just the way it's been since the pandemic. That's nothing new. But one thing new I hadn't seen until now were item limit signs placed throughout the entire store where I shop. I mean, they were everywhere. Y you may have seen them before. I mean, in some big cities across the nation, bread lines are now a thing, and not just for the homeless, but for people living paycheck to paycheck. We don't have those here where I live, yet, 
But understand though, I come from the rural Midwest. I mean, my house is literally surrounded by farmland. Yet even here, there is now a two item limit for ramen noodles. Ramen, if that's not a red flag, then I don't know what else will wake you up. Why the rush on ramen? Well, like most things, there's more than one reason. Of course, supply issues, made worse by war between the world's leading producers of wheat and fertilizer, but more so inflation. While prices skyrocket, people flock to cheaper foods. And ramen is about as cheap as you can get, but it's getting harder to come by, hence the limit signs. And looking at our political and geopolitical situation, do you think things are going to get better anytime soon? Seriously, join the thousands who have already decided to prepare. Check out My Patriot Supply at preparewithspace.com. They have emergency food kits that contain a wide variety of meals covering over 2,000 calories per day. But the best part is they have a 25 year shelf life, so you can store the rugged buckets away for the day you need them. That's preparewithspace.com. With regard to food shortage, yes, we did so talk about food shortages. And, uh, and it's going to be real. On to our next topic Dragon. The world's first dedicated commercial mission to the space station, Axiom 1, has been pushed from the end of this month to no earlier than April 3rd for liftoff. Same goes for NASA's next manned mission, Crew 4, now expecting to launch in April as well. Four just released the name of their new capsule, Freedom, like John Glenn's Freedom 7, or Bruce Willis's Ride in Armageddon. A very appropriate name for an American spacecraft. Freedom is the fundamental value upon which our nation was built. We paid for it in blood because our founders understood its value. I'm a 13th generation American. I had a great grandpa, times eight, fight under George Washington in the Continental Army. My earliest blood came here in the mid 1600s. And to this day, people from all around the world seeking freedom and opportunity, like Elon himself, still migrate here. Why? The freedom to pursue happiness. Gosh, it's almost as if Elon watched our previous episode. The freedom to build rockets and go to space. To speak the truth, like men can't get pregnant, no matter how much the woke simps hate it or to lawfully own an entire arsenal of AR-15s if that's your jive. Those who despise the freedoms we have and want to restrict them for others whom they disagree, who silence or wish to silence their political opposition, don't know what it means to be an American. Now that we've clarified why Americans would name their ride to space freedom, we can now move on to Crew-7. The commander and pilot for their mission has been selected. American astronaut Mobelli will command her first mission to space. Her Danish pilot, Mogensen, while more experienced, will be the first foreign astronaut to sit in SpaceX's number two position. They are expected to launch no earlier than 2023. And this just broke from SpaceX as I was editing this video today. NASA has ordered six additional space station resupply missions from SpaceX. Dragon will continue to deliver critical cargo and supplies to and from the orbiting lab through 2026. And now it's time for today's honorable mention. <laughs> On Monday, NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory informed us that their helicopter, on Mars, completed its 22nd flight above the red dirt. The four-pound Martian aircraft flew for 101.4 seconds, reaching a max two to 31 feet high, or 10 meters. The rotorcraft's original mission was to conduct five flights once it landed with Perseverance in February of last year, but since it survived those, it is now used as a scout to search ahead for manageable terrain for its rover companion. The duo are currently headed toward Jezero Crater's Delta, so far, the Red Planet's first choppa has racked up a total of 40 odd minutes of Martian flight time and has flown more than 15,000 feet. Well, that's all for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you're still watching these videos on YouTube, consider joining the party over on Rumble. Support those who support freedom. The free speech platform is becoming my target audience thanks to years of YouTube shadow banning my channel. I'm now starting to view the big tech pro censorship publisher as the alternative now that our numbers on Rumble are about to surpass them. Don't like the division? Near do I, it's a sad state of affairs. But put your blame where it belongs, with the cancer that is cancel culture and the weak-minded who enable it. Have a nominal weekend, you space-loving patriots. Godspeed.